Welcome to Offsite uh, Tasting Tuesday on an adventure, I guess you could say. But I thought since I'm here in this kind of weird environment, let's talk about the impact of environmental factors on tasting. Whether you're studying, which a lot of people who are getting this serious about tasting are studying for some kind of exam or certification, or you just want to be more conscious of what affects the way that you perceive flavor in your life, um, environment is a huge factor. So the first thing about as far as studying for a test and what you should think about in your environment is something that my friend Asa, or um, Dr. Asa Stone, who is absolutely brilliant, brought up that, you know, now that so many tests are going virtual, including the written portion of the Cicerone exam, people who are studying for those tests really should study in an environment that they'll be taking the test. So, so often we'll study, right, like with a book and paper and you're writing examples and writing essays and memorizing things by writing. But if your test is gonna be on the computer, you really should be studying on the computer. And I think that goes for tasting as well. As much as you can, you want to recreate your exam situation for your trial tastings because if you're used to an environment where there's a lot of sound in the background when you're practicing your tasting, the silence in the test room is going to be absolutely like deafening. <laughs> then again, if you're used to practicing in complete silence, like maybe you're, you stare at a white wall and there's nothing around you, then having people and other kind of things in the room might be totally distracting to you. I think it's really nice to do a quick tasting somewhere where maybe your roommate or spouse or friend is like sitting next to you reading or sitting next to you messing on their phone not talking to you, but just having some movement in the room, I think makes a really big difference. Um, the first time I took Cicerone, I had like always basically closed myself in the closet to do tastings and hearing other people like swishing and like sniffing totally threw me for a loop. Um, so I think it's a nice balance of being able to deal with distractions. However, you don't want to practice in a room that's like maybe has bright green walls and, uh, really dim lighting. You know, you're probably going to be under fluorescent light. You're probably going to be in a room with white walls. You're probably going to be at a table. That's my table here is very low. You know, you want to just set up the factors that you think will be similar to your testing situation. Um, and if you have questions, maybe you're taking WSET, maybe you're taking Cicero, maybe you're taking BJCP, feel free to reach out to people who have taken the test before, like they will be happy to answer your questions. So that's one thing to think about. The other thing to think about, I think has to do with studying and creating real sensory memories that will help you with blind tasting identification, blind style identification, off flavors, all of those things. So creating sensory memories and really helping yourself with style identifications through sensory memories. Um, something to know is that your olfactory bulb that we've talked about, the bulb that's right here, just like a cluster of these olfactory receptors is in much closer contact with your brain than your taste buds, your taste receptors are. Basically when you taste something, there's like a whole chain of reactions that have to go on to send from your tongue or from any receptor in your mouth or throat to your brain, your brain processes it and sends it back. So basically that's a very slow process. Whereas your olfactory bulb is literally directly connected to your limbic system. So one neural um, reaction is all that it takes to go from smelling to synthesizing what you're smelling. And you're synthesizing right in the front of your brain near your amygdala, um, which is also where your emotions are processed. Because of that, because of that, that quick, that same area in our brain and the quick synthesis <laughs> of aroma in the amygdala, your scent memories are very tied to strong emotional memories. An example you'll hear so often is people saying like, oh, the minute I smell my grandmother's perfume, like I can picture her, I know that scent immediately. You can also like force these a little bit. Um, I always say if you're if you're having like an absolutely euphoric, joyous experience, maybe you just got engaged, maybe it's your wedding day, maybe it's your honeymoon, maybe it's finding out your friend is pregnant, maybe it's getting a new job, it's uh, finding out you passed a test. I don't know. There's how many things we have to celebrate? So many. But um, try in that situation to go try something new. It doesn't have to be beer. It doesn't have to always be studying. Like my example is I never... Obviously, I don't spend as much time drinking and thinking about wine as I do beer. So on my honeymoon, we were in Australia and I tried a dry Riesling for the first time ever. And still, when I smell and taste a dry Riesling, I immediately am like in Australia. I can picture the vineyard 
And I'm just like, wow, that was like such an opportunity for me to make these really great sensory memories that like, one, I can totally tell you and I'm drinking a dry Riesling if I ever need that skill. And two, it's so nice because it takes me back to my honeymoon every time I try one. So I've heard of people doing things kind of like trying to force this, right? Where you'll either play audio or smell and taste something and try to picture something in your brain, you know, like smell and taste this heavy, try to picture like a neon purple rhino in my head and then hope that I've created this synthetic memory. Um, so when I smell and taste a heavy, I will see a purple rhino and I will know it's a heavy. Um, I think newness is a much more important factor to this and also that that emotion when we think of scent being tied to emotion like what can we do to trigger those things so whether it's going somewhere new and being in a sense of awe or a sense of relaxation um or some kind of emotion when you're trying something new um say you know you got your hands on a beer to guard which is so hard to get a good example stateside Maybe instead of just drinking it in your kitchen and trying to focus on tasting, you go somewhere new. Maybe it's, I would say office. I don't know where we can go right now. Park's probably not a good one. Uh, maybe a friend's house in like a special room that you haven't been in before. Maybe um, you go out of your way to share it with a friend and that you haven't seen in a long time or you FaceTime someone while you're doing it. So you have this like newness, this thing that you wouldn't normally be doing. And then you're tying the sensory memory to that. That's two fun ways, you know, one to try to, enforce your studies. Um, if you ever do like destination beer travel, this is a really great way to do it. I um, have a very strong sensory memory for Belgian dark strong. I wasn't even, I didn't even know that I would ever be studying or doing this, but um, uh, when we were at the Abbey where they brew West Fletcheren, I was so lucky to be there on a brew day and I was sitting outside in the cat out in their like outdoor patio cafe and they were brewing over in the Abbey and you could smell the cereals of brew day like so strongly and you could see the steam and it was just such like a nice, you're sitting there looking at it like a big, beautiful field, drinking this Belgian dark strong, drinking West C12 and like I'm bringing it to my nose, smelling it while I'm taking in this beautiful environment. And now I just like really have a strong sensory memory for that. Like I get a Belgian dark strong in a flight and I, the minute like a flicker of that like metal patio table in the field in front of me comes into my brain, I'm like, okay, Belgians are strong, like on to the next one in the flight. So you don't always have to be conscious about making these memories for them to be useful. But if you are conscious and you want to use the crazy inner workings of our brain to create some awesome sensory memories, I mean, that is totally an option when you think about your environment. There's a lot to think about on your Tuesday. When you're tasting something new, what's what's around you and are you really creating a memory from it? Um, and if you have any thoughts on environment or like weird, really strong sensory memories for aromas, um, tell me down in the comments here. And I'll also link in the video description a more thorough blog post about all of those neural pathways and what's actually happening when you make a sensory memory that's tied to an emotion if you want to get really nerdy on what's happening when you taste. So happy tasting Tuesday on a field trip in a hotel room and uh, happy Tuesday guys. I will see you next week. Wow. Oh, by the way, this is a lost rhino, um, heavy local to here. I'm here at the uh, Conrad hotel in Washington. So, uh, Always good to support local when you're roundabout.